Uh, glad to have everyone here today. We will have um, one of our uh, new senators, uh, Senator Shelley Eccles from Alto, Georgia. Is that how you say it, Alto? Gainesville. Gainesville. <laughs> Alto, she, she claims. Anyway, she'll, she'll do uh, the MVK. I believe you're number nine, if you'd like to listen to prayer. Let us pray. Dear God, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for letting us be here. Help us be patient and methodical in what we do and always make the best decisions for you. In your name I pray, amen. We added one more senator this year, I realized. I'd said before how it had grown. We're up to 15 instead of 14, and so I had to look at the chairs because we only had 14, but I thought we could also do musical chairs, you know, with your last one here. But um, I know we've got one out of state today on business, so that won't be an issue. So what we've got on the agenda today is um, to hear from our uh, Department of Audits on some of the work they've done on these uh, tax studies for us. And, and they can't really speak for the uh, companies outside of, uh, of, you know, that do their own stuff outside, but they can tell us the process and answer some of the questions. Um, but a lot of people aren't even familiar with this department. It puts out I guess you look at business days in a year, they put out more, more reports than there are days, so more than one report a day comes out of them in, in various areas on our school systems, on performance audits, on financial reports. Um, their basic job is to uh, provide decision makers with independent, credible management information to promote improvements in accountability and stewardship in state and local government. And that's us, and they do a great job. So uh, with that, let me uh, get Matt, I guess. Are you going first? Or? Okay. Your mic should be on there. Okay. Um, yeah, my name is Matt Taylor. I'm a deputy director in the Performance Audit Division in the Department of Audits. Uh, with me today is Lisa Kiefer. She is the division director. Um, what we do in performance audits is the obvious performance audits. Uh, we handle fiscal notes, and we are now uh, managing this new tax incentive evaluation process. Um, so uh, what I wanted to do today um, was just give a brief presentation, kind of an overview. Um, this is not the results of any one of the reports. Uh, the researchers, there are several, they can better speak to the uh, details of any of the reports. Um, this is an overview of the process and the, and, and the content that you'll find in, in the reports and in the one-page summaries. So um, there's a, say an overview uh, of the 2021 law. So th these reports are the result of Senate Bill 6 passed during 2021. Um, the law called for the inclusion of the net change of four items. That's economic activity, uh, state revenue, state expenditures, and then public benefit, if any, and, and that's primarily for the one for, for the tax incentives that that are not primarily for an economic development purpose. So, um, the law allows the uh, Senate Finance and the House Ways and Means uh, chairs uh, five requests each year, and uh, we, we try to complete those. This is our first year; we're, we're to complete those in December um, before the session. Um, so, the roles, uh, all the reports. Um, are completed by contractors. The law required that we contract for these. So, so after an RFP process, we selected three vendors. Uh, Georgia Southern University, their Center for Business Analytics and Economic Research, uh, Georgia State University's Fiscal Research Center, and the University of Georgia's Carl Vinson Institute of Government. Um, each of these centers has economists and analysts who work on the reports. So uh, as part of managing the contractors, we assign the projects. Uh, we ensure that the, the contractors are independent on those particular topics. Uh, we provided a general outline of what we uh, hope the reports would look like, trying to uh, ensure some consistency across uh, multiple contractors and then multiple researchers within those uh, centers. Um, we reviewed research plans, uh, assisted with data needed from state agencies if it was necessary. Uh, we reviewed the draft reports and we created uh, one-page summaries that uh, some of you may be familiar with. So going back to the, the components that are required by Senate Bill 6, uh, the first one and the one that probably is the most complex and, and takes the, the, the most time to explain is the uh, economic activity. Um, 
these are generally complex. They're varied from one report to the next, but contractors typically use uh, a program called M-Plan. You may have heard of that. That is a, it's a regional input output modeling software. And it, it shows how spending in an industry works its way through the economy. So whatever industry you're looking at, you, you so, so you can, it, it, it models the, the jobs, the labor income, which is employee compensation um, and proprietor compensation, uh, a measure called value added and a measure called economic output. So, so the way it, it often works is they get an estimate of industry spending. They calculate it, they obtain it in some method. And once that industry spending is determined, the software can, can calculate the number of jobs, the labor income, the value added, these, these other measures. So, so one is an input and the others are become outputs. Um, so there's a, a couple of these measures, value added, go back, yeah, back, I'm sorry. Uh, value added and economic output, um, those are the big numbers. They tend to be in many millions of dollars and there's some confusion about those and I am not the best person probably in this room to explain those two. Uh, I've seen a couple of economists here. Um, but value added is equivalent to an industry's contribution to the state's economy, uh, one industry. Uh, it's smaller than economic output um, because it's that output minus inputs like energy and materials, the inputs into that industry. And so what economic output will do is double count. That's the number that, that you'll often see in the paper. That's the number that gets cited a lot, the output. Uh, but value added, the researchers pretty much universally spoke to value added generally being the better measure to, to look at. So, so when you look at our one page summaries, it's that value added that, that's the contribution to the economy. That, that, that is included. So, so that's included in the value add? It, that, the, halo, that, the halo effect, I call it. That, that's included in the total. So, so uh, actually, the, the, the next slide. Can you go to the next slide real quick? So for each one of these measures, there is a direct number, an indirect, and an induced. So the direct, in, in that example, the direct would be the production companies, right. the jobs in the production companies. The indirect would be the suppliers. So caterers and those other industries that are directly supplying the production companies. And then there's also the induced effect. And those are the employees of those production companies, the employees of the suppliers, how they spend their personal money. So that would be the restaurants, doctor's offices. So all of those are, are modeled and then there is a total. So, so the numbers that, you'll, that you see in the reports Normally there will be a table that will show those three plus the total. When we talk about the impact, we're talking about the total, not just those direct. Thank you. All right. Um, we've got a couple more questions. I, I don't want to get bogged down with too many, but let's go ahead and do these and, and we can I'll also ask them after the presentation. Senator Hickman. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you all for being here. Um, I, I'm interested in follow up on Senator Beach's question about how many times y'all are predicting things turn over? You know, if, if somebody, for use his example, a restaurant, they go and they pay the employee, that, that employee goes to Kroger, that Kroger pays their employee, it goes to Burger King, that Burger King people pay. How many times are we using those, those multiples? That, that would be a question that I believe the economists, the researchers can explain better than I can. It, that, that is considered an implant in the implied, that, that it moves to the economy until it's completely leaked out of the economy, I believe, but I, I, I'm, I, I cannot speak to that exactly how that, that works. Thank you. Okay, uh, Senator Orrock. You're kind of getting a consistent line of questioning here. Yes. But called the multiplier effect. It is the multiplier effect, and, yes. And um, that's why when a hospital goes down in a rural county, it wipes yes. out everything because all of a sudden the roofer can't get paid, the tire person, the, the, the person buying, selling shoes, the right. search on insurance, all of a sudden there's a wipeout. Yes. Of a, of, a, of, a, of payroll, and yes. that rolls out, and so, and so that multiply effect. I've heard three people besides the three that, that, that are talking now say it looks like they're just looking at revenue, <coughs> and whatever mm -hmm. that whatever that you, you, that you mentioned. 
mentioned that about the um, video. What, what was it you said? The something that was used. There's some product that was used to some, some algorithm. The, the implant. So, so, it, it, so, so implant is economic activity. So right. it is it's jobs, labor, income, value added, and economic output. So it does not get into the fiscal impact. I mean, it can, but that is modeled a different way. So I, I'm just hearing the question. As I say, people on three people in the halls, and then I have to look at this and understand where the multiplier effect is. So, um, so I the multi. They, they, they are. So Implan has multipliers for each industry. And, and so when we, we actually did the film tax credit report three years ago. And the multiplier for that, I, I believe it was for jobs, was like 1.84, 1.82. Um, and so it's the difference between, if you go to the next slide, it's the difference between the direct and the total. So if the direct is one and the total is two, then, then it's, it's creating another job. For every job created, then it's creating one other job between the indirect and the induced. And, and I would add, too, on the, you know, they, they did that study, but under this method, sending about independently, we haven't evaluated the film tax credit. So we can't answer what the multiplier is on that because we haven't, they haven't sent it out. That was not one of the things we studied Understand. this year. So, okay. The All right. Mm -hmm. Well, let's 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 move on. Thank you. Okay. So I I, th I think we probably covered the uh, economic activity. Go to the next one. Okay. So th th there's an important component um, that's in the economic activity analysis in these reports um, called a but for analysis, and that's uh, the researchers uh, they were identifying the portion of the activity that can be in attributed to the incentive. So not, all so not all activity in an industry that benefits is only because of that incentive. Uh, it depends on the industry. In your example of film, it is probably likely very high, that without it, there would probably be significantly less film. But that may not be true of others. So film production. So some industries, the, the but-for analysis, it, there, there would be lots of activity even without the incentive, and in others, there may be very little. And so, so part of the analysis done by the researchers for each of these was what, what is referred to as a but-for analysis. So uh, uh, I have an example that I, I think presents it in a fairly straightforward manner. This is related to historic preservation. Uh, so, so the federal government has a historic preservation tax credit. Georgia has a similar credit um, that largely p piggybacks on that. And then you have other states that have no state level credit for that. Um, so the, the researchers you know, looked at prior research and, and tried to identify factors that would be related to, to this type of activity. And you, you look at, you find communities in Georgia, look at, well, I, I'm historic preservation. Let me, let me go low, low income housing tax credit. I think that, that's a little easier for me to understand, to, to explain. Let me, let me, I think I, I let, me, let me, low income housing tax credit. Let me start over. This would maybe a little easier for me to explain. So there's a low-income housing tax credit here in Georgia. There's also a federal low-income housing tax credit. Um, some states do not offer a, a state-level credit. But that does not mean those states don't have low-income housing units and that they have not added those in the last 10 years. So, so the researchers here can identify the number of units in Georgia and then look at, at similar communities that are, that are very similar in other states that do not have the credit do not have a state level credit and look at the growth in units in those states compared to the growth in units in Georgia. And then you can see if, it, if we are adding more than they are adding, then that, that is attributable to the state tax credit. But that is not all that we're adding. So in, in, the, in that example, it was 21% of the new units in Georgia attributable to the Georgia credit. So if so I could jump in there, Matt, sure. you, know, you know, we were taught in statistics or scientific research or economics that correlation is not causation 
uh, it's one of those basic that things. Is, that is true. And that's, I think that's what he's getting at is just because it goes along with it doesn't mean it caused it to happen. And that's part of their job is to try to separate out what was the cause of it versus what just would have happened anyway, as he's saying. And Chairman Tiller, I think you had a question. Thank you. I just want to kind of follow up on that and make sure I understand that correctly. Would it possibly, do you think it would be easier to explain that using the grocery sales tax exemption? So, yeah, I can walk through that if you'd like. I mean, obviously the exemption itself is not causing people to buy groceries. That, that's Is that that's sort of the simpler? Um, yeah, I, 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 yeah I, 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 I could speak to that. We, yeah, I, I don't know that I can answer the question. Yeah, so I the but for the but for analysis is kind of what I was going after there. Right. People aren't buying groceries because of the exemption. But that is that is true. That right. is true. They might buy a little bit less, but they're still going right. to buy groceries. I yeah. Think, point. Okay. All right. Go ahead. Uh, okay. So this is the economic activity section from the manufacturing sales tax exemption summary. So what we have highlighted here, this is this one where Georgia Southern, this is part of uh, their analysis, um, where they estimated the exemption was the basis for 25% of the industry's economic activity during the period reviewed. So, so those four numbers that you see in the, the hexagons to the right, those are represent 25% of the of the industry activity. So that's the uh, that's that's the portion. <coughs> of the activity that was attributed to the sales tax exemption itself. Have any questions? All right. Okay. All right. So the, the second component is the change in state revenue. Um, this calculation generally begins with foregone state revenue. Uh, it's the amount of the, the credit or the exemption in a given year. And then using the economic activity that's been attributed to the incentive uh, only, the researchers determine the amount of the additional tax revenue that's generated as a result. Um, so for state government, that's primarily income and sales tax, local government, you know, sales tax and property tax. Any questions on this slide from anybody? All right, go ahead. I just wanted to, to give an example. Uh, you compared low-income housing? Yes. Different states? You could have a state like North Carolina that has a massive philanthropic community. Uh, it's actually the tobacco money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, because that was a tobacco state. It was, it's, it's, uh, and and they, have, they have incented all sorts of things in, in low-income housing that's been made possible by massive investments from philanthropy. So if you compare that state's low-income housing with, say, our state, mm -hmm. there's two different playing fields because of ongoing, annual, decades-long, half-century-long investments from those uh, major foundations that uh, live there and focus on North Carolina. That's an example of what you've got, you, that you've got to know more than you think you know when you just compare apples and apples, that is how many low income, how much Okay, okay but in, right. in fairness right. here, that's not what he's saying. He's saying that is one component of it. It could be the housing regulations in that state. It could well, be the community. Right. So, He's just so, giving an example of this. And I don't mean right. to speak for you, but but no, I'm just you're you're, right. you're you're acting like we only said one thing matters, and that's not what he's saying is all. He's saying it's a very complex issue, and a lot of things right. matter, but just this one thing alone doesn't matter. So, just the money put in doesn't matter. You've got to fact, factor in a lot of other things, which could be the community too. No, well, that's what so, I'm saying. Okay, that that I, I don't. I think okay. you're 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 making it sound like though he's saying one thing mattered. The housing, the, the number of housing, and that would be a question for the people that did the study, but they put a lot of things into that. Okay, go ahead and if you right, want to answer right. that. So, so, so that. So the Fiscal Research Center did that study, and I, and I cannot speak for them. I, I cannot speak for them as nearly as well as they, they can. Georgia State, yeah, Georgia State Fiscal Research Center. Um, and they, they do an, a regression analysis. They, they identify many factors that they think play into low income, and it's not what they think. I mean, they looked at research to identify the factors that they then use in the regression analysis to try to determine, you know, 
the relative amount that each factor attributes or contributes to low-income housing. And so th this was the amount. So, so they had a, 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 an amount that they attributed to the credit here. So, so whether or not the, the, the example that you, that you used, philanthropic, whether or not that was one of the factors that they looked at, I, I can't speak to that. So, so. All right. Go ahead. The, the third component is the net cost. Um, this is generally the administrative cost from agencies like the Department of Revenue or the Department of Community Affairs. Um, and in all cases, we did not, the, the researchers didn't report an amount. Um, the, the costs in some, some cases were deemed negligible. For example, uh, the Department of Revenue doesn't have dedicated staff or something like the grocery sales tax exemption. Um, the, the, I think the agency argued that one exemption really had almost no impact on the number of retailers that are that are filing like a sales tax form. So it, it was not a some, some of these were not enough that it would really change their cost. And so you'll see that in some of these summaries, it's there's no administrative cost attributed to the to the uh, incentive. Um, the, the, and I, I believe all the ones that we've reviewed this, this time, they're, they're either negligible or they're, they're relatively small amounts. They're always administrative costs. There's a, you know, a potential in future that there can be cost savings as a result of an incentive. Um, so if a student switches from a public school to a private school solely you know, as a result of the qualified education expense credit, you, you would see a reduction in QBE funding. So that would be something that would be looked at in a credit like that um, or an incentive like that. So that is a consideration, but in, in all of these, it was just administrative costs. That's, that's what's always gonna be looked at under net cost. Uh, the final component is public benefit. Uh, the bill notes, if any, um, so th this is not really a significant category for the incentives with an economic development uh, purpose. There's not a, not, not a lot of time spent by the researchers uh, when, when the purpose is primarily economic development. Uh, there were a couple of sales tax exemptions reviewed, groceries and prescription drugs. Um, there was not an assumption that those had a primary purpose of economic development. Now, despite that, they did look at economic activity and fiscal impact. Um, but in, in those two sales tax exemptions, um, there was a, a longer discussion of the public benefit um, of those exemptions. And, and I, if I could add here, you know, I, I got to pick five and with input from the, the committee and the chair on the House side picked five. These two were his picks. I wasn't really looking at public benefit type things to look at. However, his opinion was let's look at all the large ones first, and these were some of the large ones, so that was his thinking on, on looking at these. Um. Mm -hmm. So the example on the slide there is about um, food insecurity, I, be I believe, with lower prices of, at the grocery store. So, um, okay. This is the, the list of the recent uh, tax incentive evaluations. There's a, a couple here to note, this low income housing tax credit, that was not <coughs> one released in December or, or in January, that was released I believe in June of 2022, June, so that's I been believe, six yeah. or seven, right. And then the retirement income exclusion, that's gonna be released this week. We received a final report uh, of that Friday, so we should we hope to get that out in the next couple of days. Um, the others uh, have all been released. All right, Senator Hickman. Yeah, can I clear up something real fast? And I, this is where I've been wondering. Retirement income exclusion is not a tax credit. That's a tax deduction. That, so we're, I think we're losing some of this when we say tax credits, I think, and I just figured it out by seeing that up there. We, we, you know, and I've heard some of our leadership say 200, 200 tax credits. We don't have 200 tax credits. I, I don't have the count of tax credits. There are lots of tax incentives, and that's a tax exactly. incentive, but you're so, right, it's not a tax credit. So we need to clear that up as, a, as opposed to a deduction a deduction versus a dollar for dollar tax credit like a hospital tax credit or a, or, a, or some of these other tax credits, okay? And that, that goes you. in with a point I said a little a few minutes ago. The ones I picked, I was looking at tax incentive credits in this category. 
uh, the other side said, and I'm not saying they're right and I'm wrong. I'm just saying they said, let's look at the big dollar ones. Oh, yeah. no, and and that's, that's why they made their picks. I can't speak for them. They're free to have their five, and we get to have our five, thanks to uh, Senator Albers, Senate Bill 6 from a few years ago. No, I, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying I just wanted, because I had trouble last few days. We've been talking about 200 tax credits, and I, in my mind, as I'm in a practice, practice in CPA, I know there's not 200 tax credits out there. Thank you. There might be. <laughs> <laughs> Senator Beach. He's always one out for me. Has uh, anybody checked with Pat Wilson on some of these, like, for example, the high tech data center sales tax exemption? If, if we got rid of that, would that put us out of the data center business, or would we not be competitive? Uh, same with manufacturing sales tax exemption. If we want to be in the manufacturing business, has anybody checked with the Department of Economic Development to see what kind of impact that would have? The, the researchers, I can't speak to everyone, I, I can't speak to every entity that they spoke with. I, I know that the researchers, and those were done by the University of Georgia, I know they talked with at least industry officials. Um, high Tech Data Center, I, I know that they spoke with industry officials. It was cited in the report, and we discussed it. But whether or not they spoke with the Department of Economic Development, I, 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 don't, I don't know. And, and on that one, I did pick that one. That's probably the one I should have waited on. I don't think there was enough data yet because it's so new to, to really look at it properly. So um, that, that, that one just doesn't have a lot of information yet. Th there, there were so few receiving it that the Department of Revenue could provi not provide any data at all. And so that one was entirely hypothetical. Okay. Um, Senator Jason, well, no, I'm sorry. Yeah, that's the best. Yeah, I want to make sure I said it right, but <laughs> go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, two quick questions. One, I just want to quickly go back to the but for. Are we saying that for all four components of the economic activity, jobs, value added, labor income, economic output, the but for test has already been applied to those four? Yes, when you see the results, yes, they, they have. Okay. So, so the, the gross before the but four is included in the report, but in that, in that one page summary, the, the hexagons, the big numbers that you see there, those are after the but four analysis. Okay. And then looking at these overall, understanding the methodology, thank you for explaining all of this. Um, what are some of the challenges that you see with the methodology that's, that's being used? Uh, what are some drawbacks? The, well, I, I think the economists could speak to that better than me. I do believe that these, uh, I did not see anything that was apparent. I mean, I, I, I'd worked on other reports before these, before I was just kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm a step removed now, uh, now that we contract, but I had done, done this before and, and these are very qualified economists. Um, they have a fair amount of leeway that within these areas, economic activity is not a single number. It's not just four numbers. They can talk about return on investment. They can talk about cost per job. Um, I, I, I think what might be lacking from the report, there, there's not any um, opportunity for discussing how to make them more efficient or more effective. I mean, they, they, they do largely stick to these four areas and not all states do that. Um, but the research that, that was done, um, it, it seemed, like I said, I, I'm, I'm not an economist, so I, I can't really second guess them, but what I've seen and, and looking at reports in other states, and I've looked at this since working on the film tax credit quite a bit for the last several years, and, and it, it's exactly the type of analysis that, that, that we see routinely. Um, and, and the important thing is to having independent analysis. Uh, that, that is what matters, and I think that's what you have. And along those lines, anybody that, you know, their, their website, you can go on there and see all these reports. I mean, I could bring them here, but it'd be just hundreds of pages. So I provided the summary of them, but if you want to get that kind of information, in a lot of cases, they don't give you a number, they give you a range. They're, they're you know, they'll say it's a little bit exact, it could be from here to here. Um, and, uh, but it is important that we have independent uh, research done by people that I don't know who they're picking. I, I, I know, I think you had, when we had this law, people were calling us and want to have meetings and I, I'm not meeting with you. I don't, I don't make those picks. These people are gonna be independent. I'm not picking them, industry's not picking them. 
independent. That's what this department is here for, is to provide independent data to us. Okay, um, Senator Tillery. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, thank you for backing out in the revenue of what growth may be received locally. I just wonder how you've calculated or figured that number. Is there a database somewhere that we know what um, local offsets are? Or is it just an assumption that? So, so I, I think when it comes to, to sales tax, um, there's a pretty clear ratio that, that, is, that is typically used. It, it, it's used in fiscal notes also uh, for sales tax. So if the state is, is 4%, it's I think 3.37, but it, it, can, it can vary depending on where the, the location is. But that, that's really a question the researchers would have to, to, to speak to. Um, it, it's explained in the report when I review the report I fully comprehend it, but but six weeks later or two months later, when I didn't do the work, it's, it's pretty hard. For better me than say. me. Sometimes for me, it's six <laughs> minutes later. So. A lot of us have those <laughs> All right, Senator Estevez, you had one more question. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, what information would it be helpful for the economists and the analysts to have? What's missing from? Um, well, it it, from it, it varies. It varies from one. Um, it, it varies from one tax incentive to the next. Um, some the adic some the, the, the information is sufficient and, and then other times it's not. So I, I don't think there is a, a, a single answer that I can provide. The Department of Revenue job is to administer the tax, you know, the tax laws of the state and regulations. The, the, it is not to collect data for researchers. And so if it is not needed for the tax administration, it is generally not collected and then researchers spend more time we deal with this with fiscal notes regularly and and we deal with it now now with these and the researchers deal with it trying to obtain information that, that would allow a, a, a good evaluation and and it, sometimes it's not there and, and and it takes more time to gather what's there and and to speak of y your earlier question about uh, you know where the shortcomings might be in in, in the anal in the analysis is sometimes you have to make more assumptions than you would like um, or, or not based on data from Georgia, but data in other states, or based on interviews with, with people, because, because we don't collect the data sometimes. But, but what's not collected varies from one to the next. Do you think the uh, new um, integrated data center over there under OPB will be helpful on this in the future? I know um, they're still growing, but they're starting to bring silos of information together. I don't know enough about it to say that it, mm -hmm. if it would or would not. Okay. Uh, is that Senator Hodges? Do you have a question? Thanks, Mr. Chairman. Um, Mr. Taylor, I had a question about the way you, you manage this process. You had yes. three contractors. Yes. How did how did you pick who looked at which operation? Was it random? What did they pick, or did no? It was maybe it, one have some expertise that the others didn't. It was a, it was a little bit of that. So, so where we started, we, we issued an RFP. Um, so that, that's where the whole the process began. And uh, based on the, res the responses to the RFP, we, we selected three contractors. So when we received the, the, the list of 10 in May, we put all 10 in front of the contractors and wanted to know if they had any independence issues. They had been paid by anyone Good. that was benefiting in any way from any of these incentives or if they just felt they absolutely could not, they, they did not have the capacity, especially in year one, where some were just hiring people or they just did not know what to expect. They were worried about year one and, and the, time, the time frames. So if they, if they were concerned about being able to complete certain ones, uh, then they let us know. And so that some, some ruled themselves out. Uh, and then there, we tried to group some together. So you know, high-tech data centers and computer sales tax exemption, it seemed like that should go to the same contractor. Grocery store uh, sales tax exemptions and, and prescription, we put those with the same because they were similar in how the, the analysis would be done um, because those are essentially savings to consumers. They were not business related. So we had some, so had some logic to that and, and then we had a couple that were, were rolled out. They, there were certain ones they could not do because of prior work that they had been paid to do. Okay, thank you. And I, I do hope everyone, when these tax credits come over from the House, will ask these same tough questions of who did their study. Uh, Senator Albers. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And, and hopefully whenever new ones come out, we will do that study proactively ahead of time. And, and I hope, you know, that we can work uh, continuously with you, Matt. I think your team did a great job. Uh, and in the first year of, of doing the analysis, I know you'll continue to improve that process moving forward. I'm, I'm looking at my friend, Dr. Bob Bushman in the back there, who helped us in the very first study committee we did. And we looked at the first five tax credits years ago, which actually led to what became Senate Bill 6 through Chairman Huffstetler and myself to measure these on an ongoing basis. But these folks have done a phenomenal job. They are the experts in their field. And sometimes uh, we're going to look at these, and, and, and there will be certain groups, industries, and businesses that are going to be disappointed. That's just the fact, because what I love about math is there's no emotion. It is what it is. The numbers are the numbers. Um, it, but there's also an art with a science. And I think that you know Senator Beach mentioned that with the halo effect. And I think that's being captured here very well. Uh, but we need to look at these as good fiduciaries. And I mentioned this at the last meeting, but it bodes repeating. If anything we measure is costing Georgia taxpayers money and not as a benefit, that means everybody else is paying for that. So it's not just the fact that, boy, it might be a winner or a loser, but then we're telling every other family and every other business that's paying taxes that you have to pay a little more for someone else. And if we're, sent, if we're trying to incent and create a job or an opportunity or an industry, which is a wonderful thing, we need to make sure in that process um, we're actually doing that favorably, uh, not just because uh, it sounded like a good thing at the time. So these things are going to be great to measure moving forward. By the way, there are some good ones in here. We measured some years ago that came back with a three to one return on investment that was positive. And I can make the argument, why wouldn't we do more of that? Right? So I think we have to look at each one of these, um, and I'd caution everybody not to rush to judgment, but to read the analysis and go through those so we can make good, prudent financial decisions, because we are fiduciaries of the state. Thank you. All right. Was that Senator Art? Do you have another question? Uh, at, at this really might be directed to you, Mr. Chair, but are we all on the, uh, share the same understanding about the difference between tax incentives and tax credits? Maybe, uh, I, I mean, a couple of questions have, uh, have been raised with that and the, and the terms kind of get commingled and I just looking for a good definition and see if, if we're all operating with the same understanding well on some that. of the things that we call an exemption does in effect is is not an income tax credit but it's a sales tax exemption and that's why I think uh, the my chair on the other side looked at those um, like I said those two in particular I, I wasn't really looking at but there's Sales tax exemptions, you may give it to a uh, museum. You know, is that is that what should be done? It's not necessarily a credit, but in, but it really is a credit. It's just a credit on their sales tax, and so I think that's where sometimes we get off on it. Is um, there's there's exemptions in the sales tax code, and there's exemptions in the income tax code, and um, you know we ought to every so often evaluate all of them and see if they're good public policy or are they cost effective you know things like that so so you I, said tax incentives tax credits and tax exemptions the, those the, are all three terms they're, they're that, yeah the, well are, a credit is a credit is supposed to be an incentive which means they're going to create more economic activity so the question is did that credit incentivize them enough to where it's worth taking everybody's tax money and, and giving it to them on the sales tax side, the same thing. Um, we're, we're foregoing revenue to the state on sales tax. Um, is it doing what it's supposed to do? So those those are valid questions on the sales tax side too. Matt, you uh, just one. Well, I, I was just going to say that there's a tax expenditure report that mm -hmm. is produced. That it, the tax expenditure. Those are all, I believe, eligible for review as part of this tax incentive evaluation. So there are, there are credits, there are deductions, there are also many types of exclusions. There's, How many pages are on that? It's, it's triple digits. <laughs> I mean, it's- uh, hundred, I, hundred something pages. Hundred something pages. Hundred something pages. There might be 200 and, in there. And, and, <laughs> and Dr. Bushman works on that. He, he, he would Yeah. Know. All right. Um, we're- uh, not leaving enough time for, for Lisa here, so uh, she's probably not complaining, but. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna leave this one to Matt, he's the expert on that. Okay, I didn't know if you wanted to talk on a different subject or anything else on that, so. 
All right. Well, I was wanting to save some time for her, but if um, if there's any other questions, bring them forward. This is a, a very long process. I think you know our our law last year in the law said we would study these starting in with a committee formed in May and have a report by December 1st. So this is going to be an ongoing process. I think at some point you'll see people uh, come in from, from different groups. And, and I know you guys will help facilitate that, that will tell us if you want to get in the weeds of their methodology. You know, I, I think that we'll have them available to do that. Um, it, again, he, he can't speak for for all of their methodology and tell you what kind of a program they use and what they put in there. Um, but I th do think it's a, a far, far more accurate method than we've ever had in the state for evaluating these things. It, all right. <laughs> all right. We, we really appreciate you being here and, and, and helping us out. And again, you're going to, a lot of people wander around here a year or two, three years, don't even know they exist which is a shame because they do so much good work independently uh, for us in a lot of areas with our local systems and everywhere else and things we didn't even ask about they'll show us where there's a problem at so they don't make the decisions of what to do they give us information to help us make better decisions and and really do a good job for us here and and um, if you can get yourself familiar with with some of the things you'll find some things on there they did audits on you had no idea had been studied that thoroughly. With that, thanks again for your participation and no other business will be adjourned. Thank you.